So we're now leaving Tobin James Cellars, the harvest host that we stayed at in Paso Robles, and we're heading up further north to Alameda County Fairgrounds. We've stayed in a number of different fairgrounds in the past, and we actually really like them for several reasons. One is they're usually less expensive. They usually have full hookup and the location. They're usually in an area where it's pretty easy to get around for us to tour a number of different things. And also, they're easy to get to for a big rig. So we're in the area because we're going to be driving up to Danville, which is a really cute town. And we'll check that out, but mainly because Mark's high school friend Ray lives there with his wife Peaches. So we'll be visiting with them for a while. Well, we're on our way to visit Ray and Peaches. Ray is the guy that brought over his rig and let me drive it. He parked it in front of our beautiful home in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we instantly fell in love with the concept of it. And here we are, four years later on the road. We're visiting Ray for the second time. Uh, we had a great time last time. We expect the same thing here. I want to just show you that we've had friends on Facebook that go, oh my God, it's so expensive, especially after our cost video. It's so expensive to be doing what you're doing. I'd rather be staying in a five-star hotel and, and you know, not have to worry about, you know, the black tank and the sewer hoses and all that kind of stuff. And I'm here to tell you, we think exactly the opposite of uh, being in, uh, you know, hotels and B&Bs and things because it is just so stressful. Now, we're going to visit Ray and Peaches for a day or two. Look at what we got to take along. We got to take all of our, uh, you know, we basically are moving into the place with the batteries that we're taking for our bike, the Garmin. We had to make sure that we shut down everything uh, while we're gone, our computers. We've got snacks we're taking along and bicycle helmets and all sorts of things. Sue can't do any editing, so I stayed up until 3 o'clock in the morning to make sure that we got a video for next week and we got Sue's packing her clothes right here we had a guess on what we need we're gonna have a fire remember you know you gotta pack all this stuff when you're going to your B&B and have your beautiful existence uh, gotta kinda guess on all your different outfits we hope we didn't forget anything like toothpaste and then here's my stuff last minute I was throwing it together and I mean, there are some really important items that you have to remember the pack. You know, it's like, what the heck is this? You know, oh, I know what this is. This is my heating pad for my back. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mark, you are a physical specimen. Well, I'm telling you, it's a lot of work to stay physically fit. And sometimes I, you know, need a little extra help with my muscles there, you know. But when I'm gonna go to sleep at night, I made sure that I brought my hand puppet along. Oh my because, God. Well, sometimes, what? sometimes if I'm having a little trouble sleeping, you know, it's just nice, oh, you know, good night, good night, good night. Good night. Uh, but the real thing, yeah, I don't think the so. real thing for sleeping at night for the Chan Man, this is the thing that makes all the difference in the world for me. I have to remember to bring this along. And oh this, God is when you know your wife loves you. Mm -hmm. Because when you're laying in bed at night like this and you go, good night, honey, I love you. And she actually hugs you and gives you a hug. You can tell <sighs> that you have the right woman. And I'm here to tell you publicly, I do. Let's go, Sue. We got lots of stuff to get in the car. Come on. That's right. Mark, you are high maintenance. <laughs> Here's another example of why it's 
more difficult just to pack and go somewhere than take your house in your RV. So I just stepped outside and it's like in the 60s, but all of a sudden the sun came out and it's really warm. I didn't pack any shorts. So I went back in, got my shorts. If I took my house with me, I wouldn't have to do this. Mark, what are you up to? Mark, Mark. Oh, huh. hi Sue. Well, I'm just kind of ha happy. I just got back from the dentist and uh, about three, four weeks ago, I had one of my six crowns on the front fall out and I looked really stupid. And normally on the channel, I take great pride looking stupid on the channel because that's what I do best. But it was kind of bad, so we didn't publish anything. Well, lo and behold, we're here now in wonderful Danville, California, visiting some friends. And right before I was ready to go to bed last night, eating a very soft piece of meat, another one of my teeth fell out. So if I can find the pictures, we'll put the left hand and the right hand to see what I look like with the whack-a-mole I've been playing oh, on God. keeping my crowns mm -hmm. in place. But I just got back from Ray's dentist. She did an awesome job. She really helped me and put me all back together. But that's not why we're here today. What we're going to do is we're going to relive what started Sue and I on RVing when Ray came over and visited us on a four month trip that he had that he took way back, what, four or five years ago? Yeah. Uh, probably. About five or something. Yeah. Yeah, between six. five and six years ago when he came from California and was going to Boston. And he stopped in Milwaukee and he stopped with his rig and planted the bug for Sue and I. So let's go through his workshop, which is awesome. This is the type of thing that makes me wish I was still in uh, stick and brick because this is a fantasy workshop for guys with all <laughs> of the equipment everything everything's got and even more fantasy if your rv needs to be worked on there it is let's work on it but let's go inside and take a look oh by the way ray is rv crazy enough that he oh, yeah. also has an <laughs> awesome class b for those Just, short little trips. Well, he likes to have the complete alphabet of RVs. <laughs> oh Here he's got a Class A. This is... A 2004. Let it all put the spelling up. It's a Rexall Vision. And this is the actually the one that we went in and got our... Yes. Got our ideas going on. Right. Maybe we like this. This one parked in front of our home on the boulevard. We can put a picture of what our home looked like on the boulevard and imagine this monster pulling up. And he pulls in and we sat around in here at the table. You can see Ray's got it compacted now. Nice. We sat around the table. We sat on the chairs. We chatted. You got this big giant. I mean, this looks bigger than our rig here. Just look at the way this looks. It's so open. Yes. Yeah, and, and yeah. I'm literally, you know, for the first time here now, I'm seeing the reason it is open is because he doesn't have like a wall here for a slide. Yeah. There's no slides on this rig. So this is one complete unit. But after we were done having our conversation and spending a few hours out on the boulevard, and I saw this dashboard and the setup that Ray had, I thought, we've got to give it a try. And Sue and I are really glad that Ray came over and did that. And I guess we're going to end this segment just with a nice shot of this owl. <laughs> that is really <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. A very wise Why not? owl. So now oh I'm God. stopping here for our tour of beautiful Danville, California, <laughs> 94526. <laughs> <laughs> this is our, uh, our city emblem, our town emblem. We're not a city, we're a town. Of the grand oak tree. On the Friday, after, the Friday Thanksgiving. after Thanksgiving, they light up this tree, but they don't just light it up. They have the whole town come out wow. and we sing Christmas Walk carols and wow. we have hot cider.
and Coco and all the realtors come out and pass cards. And uh, <laughs> then they light up the tree. Ta-da! Wow. And they so leave light? it on all Christmas season. Wow. I mean, look at how oh, far that tree up in there. Look at how far this tree goes, yeah. though. Yeah, it's uh, probably so why, why 180 tree, years old. What's the significance? Because it's why in the tree? middle of the town. And, and it's, it's a, a town hundred of oaks. Oak trees are oak trees. everywhere in Denver. Oak trees are the thing. So yeah, one of the reasons Diablo Road here that goes past our house is only two lane, thankfully, is because there's oak trees on both sides, oh. and it's illegal to cut down oak trees to, to do anything, oh, really. Wow. Something's going yeah. on downtown because I've never seen the traffic stop. Yeah. Here. So yeah. let's find out. Yeah. So we just took a walk from Ray and Peach's house. We're in Danville, California. We're going to the downtown area. We'll find a nice little place to eat. And we've got chocolates for dessert. There's ice cream down the way. And the problem is there are so many restaurants and cafes. It's going to be a hard decision. No, did you ever think that we only buy one thing divided by four? And then we can go, go to, to four a, different pla well, places. And, or let's overeat and go to eight. <laughs> we can do that. I'm in. I'm in. Let's, right. go. let's go. And Danville really is a cool little town with all its shops and cafes. It's one of the incorporated municipalities in California that uses town instead of city in their name, even though it's a fair size of, with a population of over 42,000. It's an old diner for breakfast only now and has the the bar and the little booths oh. established in 1935. Yeah. Still here. Yeah. If it's quaint and cozy and family run, it doesn't get any better. Yeah. Yeah. Look, how, many, how many beers do they have against the wall there? There's a list. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I like this one. Thank you. I'm so happy. you guys are beer tasting. Mm -hmm. I guess she was generous enough to offer. That is a Coke and Jack. No, it's a, a it's a snow cone. It's a, a it's a child so snow cone. An interesting thing too is that in 2020, Danville was actually named the safest town in California. How about that? You know, there are so many quaint towns in the US that you never really hear about or even know it exists, and Danville seems to be one of them. It's definitely one to visit. And now that we've walked off lunch, Let's go check out some dessert. And then right down the street is Danville Chocolates. Gotta check that out. Hey, <laughs> oh, no. what are you doing in here? Busted. You just, weren't you just having an ice cream? Look around you, chocolate is oh, calling God. my name. How do you resist chocolate? Come on. She was just having an ice cream. I'm taking one to go. And I just had my tooth put back in. <laughs> so I'm not having any of these. Hi, we're gonna have um we, we got it, we got it. You're, you're driving tomorrow. I'm also gonna have the um dark chocolate pecan grizzly. Yeah. Yep. So after all that eating, we decided the next day we needed to get on our bikes. And they said there's a really nice trail we can get on right from their house and it goes right through the city. So I went on trail links and I saw that it was the Iron Horse Regional Trail. This trail is actually 32 miles and it's all asphalt and it's a rail to trail. So that means it's pretty flat, pretty easy to ride. One of the things we really enjoyed about this trail was the variety. So we did go through the city, and we also went through some neighborhoods, but also Mark had something he wanted to drop off at UPS, and Ray said, no problem, there's one not too far off the trail. 
So Peaches and I decided to just hang back and relax and wait for them to come back. Hey Ray, let's see if these women are available. Which one of you is tolerant to fat guys? <laughs> And then there were also areas that were just wide open. One of the interesting sections, though, was when we went through a public golf course. Never had that happen before. So we decided to ride about 10 miles out, then turn around, and then stop in San Ramon for lunch. We're still going into the wind. <laughs> this is hard. That's weird, eh? How does it work? I have, you're an engineer, you have the answer. Mark is actually going to have a little Vietnamese cuisine. That's a first. I always go to Foles. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we did have a delicious lunch, but then we walked across the street to a French pastry, and then there was also a Trader Joe's, and we decided that evening to have a little taste test. And this is how it is when I get together with friends. I am weak for sweets. So we'll, so uh, we'll do a couple of taste tests, and then we'll get back to you we'll with the decide. results. We'll decide. The next day we took a long drive to Monterey and then we drove the 17 mile drive by Pebble Beach. That was beautiful. And we ended it all with a sunset at Carmel by the Sea. So we're in Monterey right now with our friends. That's them back here. They drove us and they're picking up some fresh uh, seafood. We're actually out on up here. We're not sure what pier it is. So let's take a look. Go. Now, what did they get? They, they got calamari steak. Whatever that is, there. Like... So you bought calamari steak that they take the little squids and make them into little cubes? Yeah, the, the flat, like they look yeah. like patties. I love them. Yeah. We can't find them anywhere else, so we come to Monterey's. Uh, yeah. The only spot we can look. You can see the splashing there. That those are seals. Oh yeah, out in oh, the, yeah. the bush. Oh, yeah. So if you want yeah, to, yeah, we can take a walk out there. That'd be nice. This kind of looks like the Fisherman's Wharf of Monterey. We're gonna go and check that out. The kinds of uh, restaurants and shops up there. What a beautiful day. Look at this beautiful water. And where's Mark? Ah, checking out structure. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Mark? Oh. This is the engineering portion of the uh, OGEM show, <laughs> while Sue is looking at the wonder and splendor of the Monterey Bay and the animals and the sea lions and everything. I'm infatuated with the life cycle of something like this that they built, this pier. 
like it was awesome when they built it and yeah we can do it and we can afford it and now there's all sorts of viable businesses up above but you don't know how precarious everything is here you look at all the outside wiring and you got some water pipes that are here and gas pipes and everything's kind of rusty and then they got planks to be able to service it and the whole pile of wires hanging here but then you look at this and like like this support here obviously had to be redone you know and that that's pretty awesome oh yeah compared to the one on my left yeah but you look at that one yeah. here and it's like wow that one's kind of gone uh -huh. and then you got the spiral tube in the back so they had to do that and and then they had to put some pipes in there because it was rotted out. But now you got some main beams up there oh rotting God, out. Oh my God! Look at that. Man. It's just uh, this is it's kind of it's kind of like home ownership, but just on a grand grand scale. scale yeah. Yeah. No different than your RV rotting out and right from under you. You know. So <laughs> sorry. So back to the regular channel. <laughs> So we've got crabs. Where are they? In the shell. See the shell? Right, right, right. More oh, over here. I've got a great one right here. A couple of them. How fun. This is a sea anemone. See, it's so, all full of rocks. It's kind of a squishy. It's see how a it sea shrinks? Oh my gosh. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, Wow, look at that. You see his little tentacle thing. Shrinky. Yeah. Boy, this is just a whole village in here, huh? Yeah. So we continue on to explore Cannery Row and all the shops that are there. And of course, we end up finding the sweets. This is dangerous. What are you doing? Mark. Yeah. Shame on you. So I have some advice to any companies out there that specialize in cinnamon rolls. Okay, there are there are people like me that actually are connoisseurs. And when we see a place that offers cinnamon rolls like this place, which is the Lily Mays cinnamon roll, that's awesome. Plus they look a little bit on the doughy side. They so do. I'm thinking we're good. Save some for me. So these used to be shanties that the um, fishermen would stay in. Let's check it out. Who are you spying on in there? Oh, it goes right through here, the bike path. Nice. Historic Cannery Row. So we left Monterey and blinked and all of a sudden we're in Pacific Grove. And check out these flowers in bloom. So we're riding along the um, ocean, and there's the bike path that we were going to take, but um, I don't know, we're having a hard time getting all our bikes on a rack, way too heavy. So this worked out pretty well. We took a drive down to the 17-mile drive, which is a scenic road through Pebble Beach and Pacific Grove on the Monterey Peninsula in California, much of it which hugs the Pacific coast. The drive serves as the main road through the gated community of Pebble Beach. And inside this community, non-residents have to pay a toll to use the road. So we paid our $10.75 and we were given a great map that also had 17 points of interest. And we were told to just follow the red dotted line. tour here of the 17 mile drive along Pebble Beach Resorts. We're just learning a lot of fascinating things like that rock in the distance there. It's uh, called Bird Rock. Actually, I'm going to call them up and see if they can rename it because I think it should be called Bird Metro because <laughs> uh, all those birds that are on the crotch there actually are refilling the pile up because apparently in 1930 that there was so much bird poop and pelican and until 1930 that they went up there and there was four to five feet of it and they mined it all and brought it back for fertilizer so they're kind of like you know 
waiting until it builds back up again so that they can get another mother load of this stuff. What are you doing, Sue? Uh, checking out doo doo. Huh? <laughs> no, actually, I'm checking out that bird rock, and it's so interesting because when you get up close, it looks like it's little waterfalls coming down. All it is 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 bird guano, just solid. But you can see how it's streaming down. Yeah, but it's not a well, waterfall. Not a waterfall, definitely not. Fascinating. All right, I am downwind from Bird Rock right now, and let me tell you, it is not a pretty smell. Yeah. Pew. Stop number 12, the Lone Cypress. For more than 250 years, the world-famous Lone Cypress has braved the elements atop this rocky pedestal overlooking the Pacific Ocean, known as Midway Point on the original 17-mile drive. This iconic tree has been the logo for Pebble Beach Resorts since its founding in 1919. This isn't the only one that's being protected. You know, that whole island there also, you can see the rock has been reinforced with yeah. uh, cobblestone. Yeah. And then the tree itself is a little landing that's been fixed. But you see the cabling, it's kind of, looks like, like I can see cabling. And we ended our day driving over to Carmel by the Sea and just got comfortable and enjoyed each other watching the sunset. This area was absolutely beautiful and you really need to see it. Visiting with friends has been fantastic. And even visiting Danville, what a quaint little town. I love visiting places like this. And now after leaving here, we'll be heading further north visiting some more friends in another really quaint historic town in Oregon. Thanks for joining us.